Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. On today's show, Matt Olean had a chance to visit with a very special guest. Coming up later on Prairie Pulse, we'll hear, we'll hear a musical performance from the Carluster Crumplebee Orchestra. But first, our guest is Dr. Dean Webster from NDSU, and he is a professor of uh, coatings and polymeric materials at NDSU. We're going to talk about that a bit, but first, um, and a new company you founded, but first, tell folks a bit about yourself, your background, where you're from originally, and how you got to NDSU. Well, it's kind of a long story. Okay. <laughs> uh, I grew up on the East Coast, uh, just outside Philadelphia. Uh, went to Virginia Tech for both undergraduate and graduate school. Uh, following that, went to uh, work for Sherman Williams Company, major paint company, and then uh, moved from Sherman Williams to Eastman Chemical Company, who's a supplier to the paint and coatings industry, among other things. Um, and then had been in discussions with folks at NDSU off and on throughout my career, and the opportunity came to come up and join the department at NDSU in 2001, and seemed like a thing to do, and I've uh, been there ever since. And what is coatings and polymeric materials? What, what kind of classes do they have? What kind of careers are there in these kind of things? So usually when people ask me what coatings and polymeric materials are, <laughs> I just say think paint and yeah. plastics. Yeah. Um, and I think paint is a very, uh, one of those things that people take for granted. Um, we use it every day. Um, you know, our cars are painted, our houses are painted, all, a lot of the products we buy are painted. But there are really very few universities that specialize in paint technology. Um, and there are only a handful in the US and not many more around the world. So we have a very unique niche um, in focusing in the area of paint technology. And so we teach our students, both at the undergraduate and graduate level, all of the key scientific principles behind paint formulation, all of the key ingredients, uh, how they work together, how you design new paints and coatings. Um, and then we do research into more advanced coating systems, uh, focus a lot on them making things more environmentally friendly and uh, less hazardous. Um, and so that's kind of a quick synopsis of what we do. And NDSU is really a leader, right, in this kind of department? Oh, this definitely. Kind of study. There's the very few colleges offer this, correct? There are very few, and there's, I think we're really the only department that actually offers a degree in coatings and polymer materials, uh, at the PhD level especially. Uh, and again, there are very few universities that uh, offer uh, education in this field, even though it's a, a huge industry uh, and something we use every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us about this company you founded called uh, Renewvix. You mm -hmm. founded it last year with uh, Brett Chisholm and, and a few other people. Tell us what this company is about and what you're trying to do. Well, the company uh, was founded because at NDSU, uh, myself and Dr. Chisholm had uh, been working in the area of uh, what are called bio-based polymers or resins. And what we're doing is taking, taking things that are um, based on agricultural products like sugar and seed oils and other uh, related materials and recombining those chemically to, to create new materials. Um, and we both had interesting technologies that really seem to be game changers in the market. Most of the bio-based products in the market today really have inferior properties, um, but yet the products that we had been working on or the materials we had developed really seem to be very, very different. And so we thought it was worth taking a risk, put a company together and see if we could commercialize these materials and get them out into the marketplace. And you're trying to move away from hazardous materials, right? right. That's so, really the point of this. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're, we're moving away from petrochemicals because mm -hmm. I think even though we keep finding more oil, yeah. uh, at some point we realize we're gonna run out. And so we need to really be shifting our materials to those based on bio-based raw materials. Uh, and then as a side effect, you know, we're, you know, our materials, or our products don't have a lot of the chemicals of concern that uh, people are worried about in their current products. Mm -hmm. And how's the company going so far? It's going well. Um, we're in an interesting phase uh, right now. It's, uh, we're getting our products, our samples out to customers because uh, customers have to try the materials out and see if they like them. And uh, so we're working on scaling up materials. We uh, work with manufacturers um, in the United States to scale these up to large scale. Uh, and then we're doing a lot of sampling so customers can evaluate the materials in their products. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got some things you wanna tell yeah, us about so we and, have and show? Yeah, so we have a couple of samples. So um, typical epoxy resin, this, this disc here is a uh, petrochemical-based epoxy. Um, you know, it's fairly hard and, and durable mm -hmm. material. Uh, our bio-based epoxy is as 
um, hard and durable as this petrochemical based epoxy and that's really been hard to achieve um, with a bio-based material so that's where we think we have something that's really unique and these epoxies can be used for coatings applications um, adhesives a large number of different applications we have a couple of uh, composites um, you know people think of these composites as you know carbon fiber or glass fiber but you have to have a resin to bind everything together mm -hmm. and hold it in place and so uh, these composites have our, our bio-based resin in and are, and are as strong, if not stronger sometimes, than the commercial petrochemical-based systems. Okay. And what do you have there? Another this one? is a glass fiber uh, okay. composite, so it has fiberglass in it. This is a woven fiber. So. Okay. How many employees do you have so far? Uh, really one and a okay. half. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's you guys. Yeah, we're small. We're trying to do it grassroots. Um, uh, we're we're leveraging as much as we can and um, uh, have a small workforce at this point and uh, a couple of those like me, I don't count myself an employee right, even right. though I'm involved heavily with the company. Now was NDSU involved in this too, trying to help you guys get going? I know yeah, they, NDSU okay. has uh, helped. I mean, we're, we have a, a licensing option from mm -hmm. the Research Foundation for the technology. Uh, we'll convert that into a license when we fully go commercial. Um, so NDSU has been helping there. Um, the research ND program uh, from the Department of Commerce in North Dakota has been very useful. We just received a grant um, from them. That money goes to NDSU, but NDSU gets to do a project, do work on our behalf as a company. Uh, so that in that project we're doing some uh, scale-up work and application development and things, and so we're able to kind of leverage funds from the state of North Dakota to help us really develop the products and get them out into the marketplace. Are there other companies like this, Dean, around the country? Or, I mean, how much competition is there in something there like is, this? Um, there are uh, similar companies um, that have bio-based type products. Again, I think we have unique technology. Yeah. And uh, so I think we're, we're head and shoulders above a lot, of the, a lot of the other companies out there marketing similar products. And who, who are your clients? I mean, who are you trying to reach out there? Um, uh, both, yeah. We have really a broad variety of applications. And uh, so paint and coating manufacturers um, could be our customers of mm -hmm. uh, Valspar, Sherman Williams, those type of companies. Uh, again, people who make composite materials. Um, we think that's a major application for our work, uh, for our products. Um, personal care, um, one of the other product lines, there's uh, my colleague has developed some uh, no-tear shampoo <laughs> um, that uh, looks kind of interesting and so maybe some personal care products uh, will come out of this yeah. and so it's a really broad base of applications that our technology can go into. And you told me the initial commercialization efforts are in something called sucrose esters, mm -hmm. now what is that? So sucrose is just table sugar um, and the ester part is comes from uh, vegetable oil like soybean oil. And so we combine sugar and soybean oil into a uh, resin. Um, we've inherited actually those products from Procter & Gamble. Uh, they have been manufacturing those and decided to exit the business and uh, we've been working with them to transfer that technology to us. And so we're um, commercializing those resins. They already have existing customers and so we're trying to get those out the first quarter of next year. Uh, and then the epoxy resin is a derivative of the sucrose ester where we uh, do chemical reaction to make it more reactive. And then we have other chemistries we practice on that base resin to put other reactive functional groups on that for different types of applications like curing by UV light and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then you were telling me too you want to have a brand name product called Aver. Aver, what is that? Yeah, Aver, um, that's sort of the other technology platform um, where we take uh, a vegetable oil like soybean oil and we put a special reactive group on that and it lets us make all different kinds of polymers um, and that's where some of the personal care polymers come in there's a, a set of polymers that can be used in processing of rubber materials um, and that really gives us another broad uh, technology platform to develop a family of products. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, a, little about, a little about the history of this program at NDSU because I was reading it started in like 1906, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, 1905, 1906. Yeah. Um, Edwin Ladd um, seemed to be the founder of uh, the coatings effort at North Dakota State. You know, back in 1905, you know, paint was based on things like linseed oil, agricultural products. And uh, he was a big proponent of uh, standards and uh, really establishing uh, quality standards for paint 
And uh, as I understand it, um, a lot of the standards that are practiced now in the industry were first established here at NDSU, mm. and NDSU was the only place that could do the testing. Wow. And uh, so uh, to me, it's also remarkable that, that this program has been sustained all through all those years, because usually at some point a program like that will maybe fall apart or um, not, not continue. And so it's... Uh, Nice to have a rich legacy like that of a, a long, long time program. And how many students do you have in the program, Dean? We have um, about 15 graduate students currently. Uh, we're mainly a graduate focused department. Uh, and then we have an undergraduate minor, and mm, there are probably okay. less count about uh, 15 students enrolled in the minor. What can a student do then with this major or this graduate major? What can they do in terms of, I, I'm sure they can teach, but mm -hmm. what, what kind of um, uh, in the private sector can they do with a, with a major like this? Um, there, are, there are lots of opportunities. Um, at the undergraduate level, um, students who come out with our uh, minor can easily go to a, a company that formulates products and work in a product development lab. Uh, I know some of our, our, our minors that have engineering backgrounds will go work at a, a plant where they apply coatings uh, because there's an awful lot of uh, engineering involved in applying coatings and getting them cured right and making sure that all that process was uh, done correctly. Hmm. Um, so there are lots of opportunities. A lot of our students will go to the polymer field, not necessarily the paint and coating field, because um, we do educate in the polymer area of polymer science, so they can develop different types of plastics and things. A couple other things that NDSU I wanted to ask you about, the Center for Nanoscale Science mm -hmm. and Engineering, what is that? Um, that was a uh, that is a research enterprise that was established um, a number of years ago uh, to support some large scale initiatives. Uh, there was a big com there was a big component there of uh, microelectronics um, development of wireless microelectronic devices, uh, and then there was another component of material science. Um, one of the uh, interesting things that 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 organization. Um, established was a uh, really unique facility um, called a combinatorial laboratory where um, rather than doing experiments one at a time you did multiple experiments in parallel and so that laboratory has robotic equipment that lets us synthesize mm. 24 polymers in one experiment and then carry that through make paint formulations and, and evaluate those and that's a unique facility in the world I don't think there's anyone mm. that matches that uh, in terms of the capability there. I'm sure most people don't even know this. They're Probably right, not. Right here in Fargo, <laughs> yeah. with all this is going yeah. on. What about the Center for Surface Protection? Is that uh, under your umbrella too? Um, it is uh, affiliated with our okay. department. Uh, that center is one of the uh, the centers of research excellence that the state of North Dakota established um, to uh, develop products in cooperation with the private sector. Hmm. And how about the Electron Microscopy Center? Um, that, that, again, is another center okay. on campus that we interact with a lot, but is uh, not directly okay. affiliated with us. Okay. Um, how about the Materials and Nanotechnology Program? Is that also in your purview? Yeah, we're, purview? Okay. we're related in that. Uh, that was set up as an interdisciplinary Ph.D. degree program. Um, so there are a number of departments that all participate in the Materials and Nanotechnology Program. Why, are, why is it so dangerous to use like hazardous products in industry and why do we need to get away from that, you think? Well, there are, um, I think, well, we always have to be careful because uh, we have to think of risk <laughs> versus yeah. benefits. Right. Um, there are a number of chemicals that uh, I think of as chemicals of concern. Uh, things like formaldehyde used in a lot of building products. You hear a lot of things about sick building mm -hmm. syndrome and things <laughs> because of formaldehyde emissions. Uh, there's concern about bisphenol A in various products, especially uh, the coatings in food and beverage cans. And uh, so I think it's worth looking at alternatives. You know, uh, if we can get away from those types of chemicals and not be exposed to those and by using various alternatives, I think that's a good thing. Going back in your career, what is it that get, got you interested in this way back when? Because you know, maybe kids coming out of high school mm -hmm. maybe aren't thinking about uh, <laughs> jobs like this. What what was it that got you interested in in this career? Um, yeah, it's probably a lot of a series of things and series of decisions. Um, I know I had a I got interested in chemistry because I had a really great high school teacher, mm -hmm. and uh, right. he really encouraged me in the area of chemistry and had a lot of fun in the lab and things. Uh, so I went to Virginia Tech and got into chemistry as a major. Um, 
And then a lot of us were talking, I remember once about, you know, what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do with our chemistry degree? And, <laughs> you know, one of the things that we thought of was that polymer science is one of the most practical applications of chemistry because, you know, we use plastics and polymers every day and they're really important materials. And there was a faculty member there who was a polymer scientist. So he, as an undergraduate, I went and asked if I could work in his lab. And that was like a life-changing <laughs> moment. <laughs> um, and so got involved in polymer research, uh, stayed on for graduate school, and then actually it was a very enthusiastic vice president of research at Sherman Williams that came to Virginia Tech recruiting students. Mm -hmm. Um, and really made it sound like a lot of fun to be involved in paints and coatings and so got me up to uh, Sherwin Williams Research Center and I guess the rest is history. <laughs> so what are your long-term goals for Renewvix? Um, well we of course want to have a successful uh, thriving business. Um, again we really have uh, these broad-based um, product platforms and so over the next five years, we'll be really trying to take those platforms and, and build those um, into a, a portfolio of products. Um, so that's uh, sort of the, the five-year horizon. Eventually, you know, we'd like to continue to grow, develop new products and uh, build on that. And at some point we'll see, uh, you know, do we get acquired or do we uh, do an IPO or right. something like that. <laughs> people keep asking at this stage yeah. what our end game yeah. is, and it's always hard to say. If people are interested in your company, where can they go? Who can they contact? I assume you have a website. Yeah, uh, okay. www.renewvix.com, and there's a f contact form. If anyone has interest, they can fill out that form, and it comes to us. Okay, and if people are interested in the coatings and polymeric materials department mm -hmm. at NDSU, what's that website? Uh, NDSU.edu slash CPM. CPM. Okay. And, Thanks, uh, Dean. Sure. Thank you very much. Dr. Dean Webster has been our guest. He's a professor at NDSU in the Department of Coatings and Polymeric Materials, and he has a company called Renewvix. Stay tuned for more. The Carluster Crumbleby Orchestra is a gypsy jazz group comprised of talented and accomplished musicians from the Fargo-Moorhead area. Their original music is influenced by Django Reinhardt, Stefan Grappelli, and even Woody Allen.
Bistro Fada, one of the main themes of uh, Woody Allen's great film, Midnight in Paris. I, I, I absolutely loved that movie. And uh, one day somebody uh, posted uh, him playing it on Facebook. And uh, he tagged me and a bunch of other guitar players. And they're like, OK, who can learn it first? And, and so I, I learned it right away. And then I, I uh, just absolutely fell in love with it. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse for this week. And as always, thanks for watching. Funding for Minnesota Legacy Programs are provided by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008 and by the members of Prairie Public.